demonstration. This is Rob McLaughlin on the Saturday morning breakfast programme. Between now and eight, the village that's awaiting the arrival of Britain's noisiest neighbours and the kickstart for soccer's sleeping giant. The Saturday breakfast programme on Five Live. Now it's time for the racing preview. Here's Robert Cooper. This is Rob McLaughlin. The Northern Echo reports that smokers are to be banned from lighting up on trains in the northeast. The poll is said to show that a shift of only 3% of votes could tip the balance in 21 existing Conservative seats. Prince Charles has been visiting the German capital Berlin to take the salute at the annual Queen's birthday parade. Coming up, the views behind the headlines as we take our weekly look at the stories that have been making the news. This is The Breakfast Programme on 5 Live, 909 and 693. Politics, news, sport, and much, much more. It's Rob McLaughlin live and exclusive to City Talk 105.9. Rob McLaughlin on City Talk 105.9. In a few minutes, we're going to be taking an unusual taxi ride with the Shadow Chancellor George Osborne. Politicians always want to take you for a ride. This one literally does. And we'll be talking exclusively, or you can hear a full exclusive interview with David Cameron just after 8 o'clock. And at 8.15 this morning, I'm going to be joined live in the studio by the Health Minister, Ivan Lewis. This is Rob McLaughlin. David Cameron. Welcome to the program. Let's first of all begin with one of the critical issues here in the Northwest, which of course is crime. It is, as you know, six months since the death of Rhys Jones, and we've had the tragic incident, the tragic death of uh, Gary Newlove, of course, in Warrington. Does the Conservative Party have any answers to this crime wave? Yes, absolutely. The first is to recognise that we are dealing with quite wide-scale social breakdown, uh, and we've got to recognise the scale of the problem. Uh, And we say, well, we can fix this. Actually, if we do back families rather than undermine them, uh, we can actually have have a benefit system and a tax system that pays people to stay together rather than to separate. You know, we can get our police out of the police stations and onto the streets. It means tearing up the forms and getting rid of the political correctness, but it can be done. And we can have discipline in our schools so we don't actually bring up another generation of of, of young people uh, who who don't have any idea of discipline and decent values. That can be provided in our schools. Is it just that? Because, of course, We've seen Helen Ulove, who has called, um, very very heavily criticised the sentencing. She's called for the return of the death penalty. We've heard it again from the victims of Stephen Wright in Suffolk. Would you, if you were Prime Minister, would you sanction a vote in the House of Commons on the death penalty? Uh, look, I don't support the death penalty. The House of Commons does vote on it from time to time. I don't believe it will return. And I think uh, the reason why is the danger of putting to death someone who's innocent. I'm joined live in the studio by the Health Minister Ivan Lewis. You've heard what David Cameron said. The NHS is his top priority. You have put a lot of money into it, but let's face it, there have been improvements and everybody recognises that, but in consideration of how much money has gone in, you probably haven't got, if you put your hand on your heart, the improvements that you really wanted as a government, have you? By the end of 2008... Was that a yes? I think the yes is that the progress we've made in terms of rebuilding the foundations of a health service, which was an absolute shambles ten years ago, that progress has been massive. Rob McLaughlin. William Hay, let's begin by looking at how you see Britain's role in the world. We have just been through a period where Tony Blair has committed us to more wars, more conflicts than any Prime Minister since World War II. Do you think that Britain's role is that way, that we should be an international peacekeeper? Well, certainly Britain should have a very active foreign policy. And we have to learn the lessons of some of those interventions that Tony Blair made. Uh, But we ought to remind ourselves, too, that many of them were justified. Rob McLaughlin. Rob McLaughlin on City Talk 105.9. Sunday morning radio, of course, you're listening to City Talk 105.9, and that must be the most famous theme tune on British television. The man sitting opposite me, uh, you can't remember how many times you've heard that, can you? Oh, no, no, but every time I do, I get nervous, because uh, originally <laughs> it was live, and, and we used to hear that theme music coming up, and my nerves had start, and it's still a little residual. But mind you, we don't hear it in the studio now. We just knock it off scene by scene, and then it's all put together. They and, don't play the theme tune. And, and as if I have to say it, the voice that you've just heard, of course, is 
the one and only William Roach. Uh, Ken Barlow, 48 years in Coronation Street this December, Bill. Yes, that's right, two years to the 50. Amazing, isn't it? Rob McLaughlin on City Talk 105.9. Diane Udale, Gladiator Jet. Now, we were talking just before the news about uh, how you got into it. Mm. Once you got into Gladiators and it became a big show, what happened to your life? Gosh, it, 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 well, of course it changed, I guess. I, I, I resisted it, um, and the baseball cap came out, and I was doing the whole kind of not wanting to be followed by people who'd spotted you in the supermarket. <laughs> and you came up with the idea of calling you Jet, naming you after a petrol station. That was n- <laughs> a nasty Nigel, thank you, exactly. Was sponsorship. <laughs> that was Nigel Lithgow, and I don't know why. Nasty my Nigel from Popstar. That's yeah. absolutely right, and um, he called me Jet. I think it's because I was very sort of nimble and quick at doing the... Uh, original tryouts. This is Rob McLaughlin. I'm delighted to say we're joined live in the studio by one of the most senior churchmen in the country. He is only the eighth Roman Catholic Archbishop of Liverpool and only the second to emerge from the north. He was born in Morecambe in Lancashire in 1938. His father, originally from Donegal in Ireland, was the local dentist. He was ordained in Rome in 1962, became Bishop of Salford in 1984, and then he succeeded Derek Warlock as Archbishop in July 1996. Today, his pastoral duties extend across the north of England, and he is a regular visitor to the Middle East in his national role with the Catholic Bishops' Conference. He is, of course, His Grace the Most Reverend Patrick Kelly, who joins us this morning. Good, Good morning. 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 Now, that's a heck of an introduction. Terrible. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yes. You've got to answer all those questions. Exactly. Very oh, well. Now, I remember yeah. uh, once talking to your predecessor, Derek Warlock, yeah. and he said to me, because I always get confused what you should call an archbishop, you yes. said a moment ago when I greeted you outside, <laughs> You say, call me your majesty, yeah. whether it's your grace, your well, majesty, sure. whatever. But Derek Warlock once said to me that actually the highest compliment you can pay an ordained man is to say father. Exactly. I've always said that. From then it's downhill. Because <laughs> in a way, it's it's um, it's an enormous challenge and, and a very demanding one. And your name is? Andy Burnham. And your occupation? Member of Parliament. And your ten questions on the subject of Everton Football Club begin now. What is the capacity of a Goodison Park to the nearest 1,000? Uh, 40,000. Correct. By what name was EFC originally known? St. Domingo's. Correct. Who are Everton's next UEFA Cup opponents? SK Brand. Three out of three so far. Who scored the winning goal against Manchester United in the 1995 FA Cup final? Paul Rideout. Correct. Four out of four. In which season did Dixie Dean score a record 60 goals? Ooh. Uh... Was it 27, 28? Absolutely correct. Five out of five. Well done. How much is a cup of tea at Goodison Park? I was about to say too much, but I don't want Mr. <laughs> Keith White to bring me up today. Uh... Oh, about £1.60. Oh, absolutely correct. Well done. Who is the youngest ever Premiership goal scorer? At Goodison. James Vaughan. Absolutely. Age 16 uh, years, 271 days. And who preceded uh, Wayne Rooney. What is Mikel Arteta's shirt number? Six. Correct. Who is David Moyes' assistant manager? Has he appointed one? I think, is it Andy Holden? I don't know whether he's actually appointed one yet. He hasn't appointed one, so there is a vacancy, Andy. That could be your next dream job. And finally, can you name and sing the tune that Everton run out to on match days? Oh, I hope you're going to play it for us now <laughs> on City Talk, aren't you? Isn't that the prize for getting uh, all these questions right? Uh, uh, it's, it's, of course, Zed Cars. And, uh, uh, it had a name before Zed Cars. Oh, Johnny Todd. Johnny Todd, the Liverpool Sea Shanty. Andy Burnham, you were asked ten questions. I'm delighted to say, live on the radio, you've got all ten correct. Give him a big round of applause. Waking you up on Sunday. Rob McLaughlin, City Talk 105.9.